From here, we will talk about uh, ELS, electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. But before we talk about the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, let's um, go back a little bit to talk about the necessity from resistance to impedance. From resistance to impedance. So from our physics, what we learned in physics, we know resistance and we know Ohm's law. Resistance is the ability of a circuit element, or sometimes the entire circuit, to resist the flow of electrical current, specifically, especially for DC electrical current. And Ohm's law is what we learned in physics. From that, we said the resistance is a ratio of voltage divided by current. This is particularly the case for DC. And uh, voltage over current give us the resistance. That is our Ohm's law. And for a so-called ideal resistor, a resistor behaves that uh, perfectly, it would form follow Ohm's law at all current and uh, voltage level. From very low current density to very high current density, from very low DC voltage to very high DC voltage. And it actually follows Ohm's law for both DC and for AC, alternate current. And um, an ideal resistor is also independent of AC frequency because we said it follows um, Ohm's law for both DC and AC. And for AC, of course, the first question would be at what frequency F? But the ideal resistor, the resistance, this R value or this ratio is independent of the frequency. No, whether it's high frequency, megahertz, or even G or even higher, kilohertz, megahertz, or to very low frequency, one hertz or even lower. And finally, impedance, an uh, ideal resistor, a AC current and the AC voltage are, as what we said before, they are in phase with each other. They are in phase with each other, which means both the current and the voltage, they reach zero at the same time, reach maximum at the same time, and they go back to zero at the same time. They are in phase, okay? Uh, always they are in phase with uh, each other. On the other hand, researchers find that we have to introduce additional concept called impedance because the circuit elements may not always behave like an ideal resistor. There are circuit elements that may ex exhibit more complex behavior more complex behavior than ideal resistor, than this pure linear really, um, behavior. For example, as we learn in physics, there could be capacitor C, and the symbol is this um, parallel plate, okay, within the electrical circuit. And if you remember, for a capacitor, if we have a DC voltage, a constant voltage, then after the capacitor is fully charged, the DC current through the capacitor would actually be zero, would actually be zero. As long as the DC voltage is not too large to cause um, percolation, uh, to cause dielectric breakthrough, then the DC current would be zero as long as it's uh, stabilized uh, reached the stable potential, it's fully charged, okay? On the other hand, for AC voltage, V, we put a tau sign above to represent AC voltage. For an AC voltage applied to a capacitor, and uh, if you remember from your physics, the, there will be AC current, there will be AC current, and it is not zero. But the relationship is a little bit complex. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But it's not simply a linear relationship between voltage and current. 
On the other hand, we may have another type of circuit element, which people call inductor. Inductor, which is essentially a coil, and the symbol quite often we draw it like this, looped back and forth, a, a coil of wires. And then, if we apply a DC voltage, if we apply a DC voltage, finite, a small finite DC voltage across this coil, the DC current would actually go towards infinity. The DC current would go towards infinity because current will just go through. There's almost no resistance between the two. On the other hand, if we have AC voltage, V tau, there will be a AC current. And it's not zero. It's now also not infinity. And we will talk about the, um, the relationship later. But you see these two examples, capacitor, inductor. Both of these are not behaving like a ideal resistor, not a simple, pure linear relationship. So in order to describe the response or re, um, of the circuit to such type of uh, electrical elements, people have to introduce another concept called impedance impedance and generally it has the symbol of z it is a general parameter it's a general material parameter to measure the ability of a circuit element to resist or sometimes we call it impede that's what we call impedance to impede to slow down the flow of electrical current and it covers for both dc and AC for both direct current and for alternate current. Okay, it has a symbol of Z for impedance. It's a generalized parameter to measure the ability of a circuit element, whether it's resistor, whether it's capacitor, whether it's inductor, or some other element to impede, to slow down um, the flow of electrical current for both DC and AC. And quite often that's still it has a definition Z equals V over I. But now V could be V tau means AC voltage and I would be I tau also mean in AC current. And this ratio we call it impedance. And in fact, as we will show later, impedance, quite often we use it as a complex number. A complex number.